And then last uh, but not least, uh, well, not last because I'm going to tell you one more thing. Uh, the digestive enzymes can be neat just not only for, obviously, for digestion. They'll help you access nutrients more effectively, but they also have anti-inflammatory properties, as we've talked about so many times on this program, if you take them on an empty stomach. And then probiotics can be very helpful for all inflammatory health issues, especially when it comes to fats or, or to joints, I should say. Uh, and that's the BioLumin Nightly Essence, and I would be taking four of those, at least four of those a day, but you probably would be, wouldn't be a bad idea for you to double that and take four in the morning and four at night. And that ought to get you started. If you want one more good nutritional supplement for arthritis, magnesium can be nice and have some nice anti-inflammatory properties, and it works well with the vitamin E. Uh, that's the Osteomag from Longevity. Thanks so much for your call. Appreciate it, John. Is there anything else you want to add? Well, yes, I do. A couple of things. Uh, what about the third biotic? Um, I'm not a fan. No? I, 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 no, I'm not a fan of that product. I don't talk no, about it too much. Doc, I know Doc Pollock used to do minocycline uh, for a couple of weeks. What do you think about that? Uh, you know, that's that. there's a theory that rheumatoid arthritis is caused by bacteria. I'm not convinced of that. Um, but, yeah, that's, that would be, if you wanted to try it, the killer, bio, the killer biotic is like an antibiotic alternative, but it's not as strong as an antibiotic. If you really wanted to go all out and, uh, and, use, and, and uh, take care of the, the, the bacterial approach to, uh, to arthritis, then you might want to try some, an antibiotic or the killer biotic. But personally, I'm thinking rheumatoid is an autoimmune disease, and that means something is getting into the system that is triggering an autoimmune response. The body's confused, essentially. Now, there is that whole bacterial theory, but I'm not, I'm not a proponent of it, but you might want to try it. I'm thinking more food, digestion, and fats and uh, fatty vitamins like vitamin E. Number two, uh, my urine is very, very smelly. Oh, uh -huh. okay. Well, that's, that's meaningful. Um, now, sir, if it's, it's not like asparagus by any chance? Sometimes uh, well, I don't know. It's just really, it? uh, sometimes foods, good. sometimes foods will make urine smell, but the, uh, diabetes or some kind of metabolic problem, that is a problem with how your body is, is processing foods and, and making energy. That's usually what you're looking at when you have a, a, a smell of urine. It could be a kidney problem too. Uh, it could also be some kind of, it could be dehydration. You may want to try drinking more water. I'm assuming you don't have a urinary tract infection. It doesn't hurt when you urinate. And I'm assuming you don't have a kidney problem or a bladder problem. Uh, that could be significant, though. That might, tell, that, that might be that you have some kind of metabolic or biochemical issue going on. You really need to find some other symptoms, John, because it sounds like something else is going on, but without knowing what those are, it's hard to isolate the problem. Look for other symptoms and shoot me an email or give us a call back, and then we can work with you a little bit better. But it sounds like something else is happening in your body. So much, Ben. Appreciate it. God bless, man. Good luck. All right. Uh, let's see if we can get a few more in here. Ben in Kentucky, what is up? My namesake. Good. Well, welcome good to the morning, bright side. Ben. How you doing, Thank my you. man? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing well. Thanks for calling. How can I help you? I'm uh, calling. I've got some keloids, and okay. this seems to be on the vein of what you've been talking about the last few days. Okay. Um, Did you have a wound, uh, any kind of wounding, or the keloids just showing up? I don't remember getting a wound. I'm, I'm not developing more keloids. I've okay. had these for... 15 plus years. Okay, but you don't have any more. They're not happening all the time. No. Okay, then once no, the keloids. I, no. Uh, keloids are formed by collagen. Co the collagen is the, the main protein in the body, the main connective tissue protein, and it is a significant, it forms a significant concentration or significant uh, amount of the skin, the lower part of the skin, the dermis, is made up of collagen. So uh, the, the cells that make collagen are called fibroblasts. Remember, all disease is cell disease. If you have keloids, and for the listeners, keloids are these kind of raised sort of scar tissue that forms on the skin. Uh, African-American males will get them. They'll sometimes occur after wounds. Uh, it, it's a sign that the fibroblasts, the collagen-making cells, are not doing their business correctly. And we're going to talk about why cells don't do their business correctly tomorrow. But long story short, you want to think about fats and fatty vitamins if you have keloids, if you're keloiding, uh, if you have chronic formation of these keloids, these raised kind of scar tissue. Uh, and that is especially vitamin D and essential fatty acids. And I'm, I'm not speaking to you, Ben, because yours are already formed. But for folks who get these chronically, or who can, and especially African 
in American males focus on vitamin D as well as vitamin A because they work together and fat, uh, essential fatty acids and the whole fat metabolism uh, issue that we're going to talk about at length tomorrow. Uh, so fibroblasts uh, make collagen. They're collagen-making cells. Don't worry about the name. Uh, collagen-making cells become defective. They produce collagen incorrectly, and that's what a keloid is. Now, Ben, my friend, yours have already formed. So they're on the formation. Uh, they're on the, they, they, in the category of a scar, and you're not going to really be able to get rid of those except for surgically. They're already there. Okay. Uh, and I wish, okay. I, could, I wish I could tell you that you could do something nutritional, get rid of them. You can't. Once they're there, they've got to be removed surgically. Where, are they, where do they appear? On your body? On your face or your neck? They're on my chest. Oh, on your and chest. It really shocked my doctor because I'm 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 a white guy. He, yeah. he said he normally saw them in, in females guy. in the area they are after a mastectomy. Yes, they usually and come after surgery. Easy. They would come after a surgical yeah. procedure. But but anybody who's having a surgical procedure who and even sometimes sometimes African Americans who get them just from shaving. So any kind of cuts or wounds or surgical procedure, if you suspect you might keloid, focus on fat absorption and fat malabsorption. We will be talking about that at length tomorrow. Ben, I gotta move. That's all the time we have for all today. Right, thank Thanks you. for your call. And I apologize if I left you on hold. Call back tomorrow and we'll uh, tell our call screener that we left you on hold. We'll get you first up. Thank you guys for listening to the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben. If you want to learn more about the injection products, please head over to my website, brightsideben.com. You can pull down on the menu and you can purchase any of the longevity products. Take a specially long look at the Beyond Tangy Tangerine 2.0. If you haven't tried it yet, please give it a shot. You're going to notice results within one or two doses if you're like 99% of the folks who use this stuff. Please check out my blog, pharmacistben.com, and I'd love to have you join the Bright Side Ben team for a one-time $10 fee. You can join the team and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. That's all the time we have for today. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. Self-reliance. Survival supplies. Survival skills. National experts. Get it all at the only free-to-attend national event exclusively for preppers. This spring in Tulsa, it's the National Preppers and Survivalist Expo. A must-be-there event. Presented by American Living. This massive expo will include special guests. David Mays from Nat Geo's Doomsday Preppers. Plus, GCN Zone Dr. Joel Wallach via live video conference. Hear Dr. Bones, Nurse Amy, and members of the American Prepper Network along with many other leading national experts. Learn life-saving tips, CPR, how to handle crisis situations, walk through a bomb shelter, and much, much more. Two big days, April 5th and 6th at the Tulsa Expo Square in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's April 5th and 6th, doors open at 9 a.m. with absolutely free admission. Don't miss the National Preppers and Survivalist Expo, America's largest emergency preparedness event. Get your free tickets now, nbsexpo.com. That's nbsexpo.com. Big business has discovered the preparedness market, and that makes it difficult to know where to go and who to trust. MyPatriotSupply.com is owned and operated by patriots just like you. Has the best prices on storable food, non-GMO seeds, water filtration devices, home canning equipment, survival and self-reliance books, and more. MyPatriotSupply.com has old-fashioned values and the absolute best customer service in the industry. Look for the deal of the day, unique affordable survival. Survival supplies that fit anyone's budget. Get same day shipping on all orders and free shipping on orders over $49. Call 866 229 0927. 866 229 0927. Or visit mypatriotsupply.com for emergency preparedness, self reliance, and food independence. Shop with a name you know and a name you can trust. Before it's time to survive, it's time to prepare. MyPatriotsupply.com.